Hey guys, how's it going? This is the Helpful Lockpicker here, and welcome back to my lockpicking homeschool series. The video I have for you today is going over spool pins. Spool pins can be really fun to learn. They're one of my favorite pins to work on, but they can put up a really big fight when you're first learning security pins, and I'm going to provide you with some tips and tricks to get them open in just a minute. Please stay tuned. So let's first start off with what is a spool pin. A spool pin is one of the most common security pins that you can find in the market. They are very often used in many different locks and they have a very distinct shape. You can see that they have a smaller inside diameter and a thicker outside diameter. What happens when you use a spool pin is they will create a false set when you're opening up the lock. So when you go to set a spool pin and you've set all the non-spool pins, the core will start to turn over like it's going to open, and that is because the lock is getting stuck on the thinner inside diameter of the spool pin, and you're going to need to set that in order to get the lock open. As you start to lift the spool pin up, it will start to straighten out over the thinner part, moving over to the thicker part, and the lock will give some counter rotation back, and once all the pins are set, you will get the lock open. So what we're going to do today is go over a couple scenarios on how a spool pin can make opening up a lock more difficult, and we're going to get into that in just a minute. In order to proceed, I'm going to be going under the assumption that you have a strong understanding of how locks work, on how lock picking works, and how binding order works. If you need to refresh on any of these topics, I'll put some links in the description below, and additionally, I'll put a link in the top here on how binding order works. When you start to add spool pins into a lock, it can start to drastically change the binding order, and the lock will pick a lot different than when it had all standard pins. One thing that you can do when you have spool pins is you can start to really get a difficult time finding the binding order. In this lock, I have all spool pins in it, except in chamber 4, which is a standard pin. One thing you can do when you are picking a lock with spool pins is do something called force a false set. Forcing a false set is when you pick the standard pen, and it may not be the correct pen to set first, but it is binding and you will start to get a false set. In this particular lock, I can pick pen 4 first, and then I will get a false set, and then I will start trying to pick the other pens, say pen 1, and when I start to pick pin 1, 4 will drop back down. This will start to cause a lot of confusion because you'll wonder why 4 dropped back down. When you set it, it was binding very strongly. It's set and it should have stayed above the shear line. But the problem is, is it was not the correct pen to set first and it was not in the true binding order. I'm going to be going over more how you can force a false set in the true binding order in just a minute. But one lock that can really start to cause all of these difficulties is an Avis ATI 50 Titanium. These locks are notorious for dropping pens, and if you do not pick precisely the right binding order, you can really get stuck for a long time. So I'm going to get some more information up on this in just a second. So now what I'd like to do is go over some of the difficulties when you are trying to set a spool pen. Oftentimes the standard pen is going to be the one that's going to bind the hardest and you're going to feel like that's the correct pen to set, but I'm going to try to explain why it is not always. So the correct binding order on this lock is going to be 1, 2, 5, 4, 3. So if we are probing through each pen and we feel that pen 4 is going to be binding up the strongest, we're going to set pen 4 and then we're going to get a false set because pen 4 is the standard pen. And now we're going to try to pick pen 1, which you can see is the correct pen to be binding first. So once we set pen 1, pen 4 is going to drop back down and we're going to need to start over. So pen 1 is now set and then we're going to go over to our next key pin. Now we're going to push on key pin 2, we're going to feel that set, and then we're going to continue down the lock. Now we're going to see that pin 1 is set, pin 2 is set, now we're going to move on to pin 3. Pin 3 isn't ready to set, so we're going to ignore that. Then we're going to go over to pin 4, which is not ready to set, so we're going to ignore that. And now we're going to go over to pin 5 which is binding and giving us some nice counter rotation, and now we're going to set pen 5. Now, once we have pen 5, we're going to go through the whole stack again. We're going to feel 1, that feels set, 2 feels set, 
And now we're going to move on to pin number three. Now when we lift on pin three, that's not going to be ready to set, so we're going to move on to pin number four. And now once we start to lift up pin four, we're going to get some good counter rotation. We're going to feel that set, and now we're going to go down the stack one more time. We're going to feel that pin one feels set, pin two feels set, and then we're going to move on to pin three. Now when we get to pin three, we're going to feel some counter rotation. That's going to set, and then the lock's going to open us up. So when we get focused on just trying to find the first pin that is binding, it may not be the first pin that you feel, and this is going to get us into a long, drawn-out process of trying to find the correct binding order, which is part of the process. But if you're able to take good mental notes, it will help you decipher the correct code for the binding order more quickly and it will help you get through your locks. What I'd like to try to do now is give you an example of forcing a false set. If we go back to what the true binding order on this lock was, it is 1, 2, 5, 4, 3. So that is precisely the order you need to set these pins in order to get them open on your first try. But that does not mean pin 1 is the only pin that is binding. On this lock, the standard pin and position 4 is binding up as well. So I'm going to try to show you an example of what happens when you set the pins out of the true binding order. So when I start to lift up on 4, I can set that to the shear line, and then I will get a small false set because pin 4 is the only standard pin in the lock. You can see that I've also set pin 2 possibly because the shank of my pick lifted that up as I was trying to lift pin 4, but that's okay. When I go to set pin 1, I'm going to start to get some really good counter rotation, and I'll get that set, but you'll notice that all the other pins will have dropped back down. That is because pin 1 is the correct pin to set first in the true binding order, and then we're going to need to follow the rest of the binding order and to get the lock open. What I'd like to do now is show you an example of me picking the lock 1 through 5 and continually going through until we get the lock open, and then do in another example of me picking the lock with the true binding order, and you'll see how quickly that is to get the lock open. When you are working on locks, it is really a good idea to try to take notes and try to observe which pen is binding first, which is setting first, and so you can try to work out the true binding order very quickly because that will help you get these locks open. What I'd like to do now is show you an example of what happens when we try to open up the lock without a plan. We're going to try to pick the lock going 1 through 5 until the lock opens up. So if we recall, the correct binding order is going to be 1, 2, 5, 4, 3. So when we start off with pin 1, we should be able to get that set rather quickly. So we're going to start off with pin 1, and we're going to see that that one sets very easily. And then pin 2 should set, because that's the second pin to set. Now let's see what happens when we go over to 3. 3 is binding up. Got a click out of it. Well, let's see if we can get it to stay up to the shear line. So now pin 3 set. Now pin 4 set. We have a really good false set. All of the pins are set except 5. And when we get to 5, we'll see what happens. So 5's got great counter rotation. It starts to set. But as you notice, the pins started to drop back down because those were not in the correct binding order. Since pin 1 and 2 are the first two pins to set, we're going to see what we need to do to get this lock open. So we just realized that pin 3 was not the next pin to set. So let's try pin number 4. So we set pin number 4, and then we set pin number 5 in the process, and we are going to now go back to pin 3, get some counter rotation, and we'll see if the lock, we can get it opened up. So. Oftentimes, when you are doing this without a plan, you're going to be poking around a lot at the lock, and it's going to take you quite a long time to get the lock open. You always want to try to take some mental notes and understand what's going on. So now let's do an example of what happens when you try to pick the lock open with the correct binding order. This is going to be an example of the true binding order of this lock, which is 1, 2, 5, 4, 3. And this is precisely what you should aim for every time you're working on a lock, because the true binding order is essentially the password to your lock. If you can hit the pins in this precise order, you'll be able to get your lock open quickly and effectively each time. So I'm going to try out the true binding order right now. So we're going to pick pin 1, we're going to set that to shear, got a good little click out of it, and that's set. Now we're going to go over to pin number 2. And now that pin number 2 is set, 
we're going to move all the way back to pin number five because that is the next pin in our binding order. So we're going to lift up pin five to shear. And now we're going to move on to pin four, which just needs to be lifted just a little bit higher. And you can see now that we have a really nice false set. All of the pins are set except for pin number three, which we will need to set and which is the last pin in our true binding order. So pin three is giving us some counter rotation. We're going to maintain our tension. We're going to lift that up to the shear line and our lock has now opened up. Finding the true binding order is a little bit of a task for you to learn when you're first starting out, but if you can take really good mental notes, pay attention to the fine feedback your lock is giving you, you'll be able to get your lock open very quickly every time. So the true binding order on this lock was one, two, five, four, three. And this has been a really great example of what a true binding order looks like when you're dealing with locks with spool pins. As a quick recap, what we went over today is what spool pins look like, how they commonly present, and some of the troubles that they can cause when you're starting to learn them. Spool pins are one of the most common security pins out there, and they're very important for you to learn if you'd like to get more involved in your lock sport journey. Spool pins can really make a really big impact on the binding order. Spool pins can really start to change things. You need to learn the true binding order, which is the order that you need to set the pins to get the lock open on the first try. Oftentimes when you're setting a spool pin, you'll feel a pin that is binding and it may not be the correct pin that is binding first. Sometimes you'll start to force a false set where you'll pick the standard pin, you'll get the false set, but all your pins will start to drop back down. Spool pins can be a little bit frustrating when you're first starting to learn them, but they are a very necessary thing to learn. Either way, guys, I hope that you guys have found this video very helpful. And if you guys have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you all have a great day. And I'm continually working on making more lockpicking homeschool videos to help you grow to an intermediate level down the road. Thank you so much for checking this out.